we are going to go to a Q&A with Pastor Keith. And uh, Keith, I think you're ready to go. Are you? There you are. <laughs> I didn't give you much warning, did I? Okay, we've got some great questions coming up. Uh, let me just get to the section here where I got the right questions. Okay, so are you ready for some questions about prayer? I am ready. Okay. I love this question to kick us off from, from Sir. Do some prayers not reach God? Uh, very true. Because some, remember the Pharisees? Jesus said, your prayers don't reach, <laughs> your prayers aren't getting above the ceiling of the synagogue, Jesus basically said. Because um, Jesus was contrasting the prayers of the Pharisees that were, you know, they're basically self-congratulations is what they were. I thank God that I'm not a Gentile. I wasn't born a woman. And, I mean, God didn't even hear those prayers. But let, watch this. Here's the good news. Uh, right in the same breath, Jesus says, but look at this, uh, you know, Gentile that comes in and just says, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. <laughs> Jesus says that that prayer went straight to heaven. So, of course, there's some prayers that don't even uh, get get heard in the sense that uh, they're not even prayers, really. Because right. a prayer, by strict definition, is something that is said to God, right? Yeah. But if I'm just saying a prayer to sound poetic or articulate, right. you know, I remember this one story, Matt, where this... Uh, this guy was chairing a church business meeting, and he, and he prayed he, and he, this flowery, eloquent, articulate prayer, Oh, God, our Father, who can do anything? And then he finished his prayer, and he said, Ladies and gentlemen, the situation we face is hopeless, and there's nothing we can do about it. It's like, <laughs> you think God heard his prayer then? Right. It didn't come from a heart with any trust of God. Right. You know, so, uh, yeah, I, 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 in that way. God does right. not hear every prayer. Right. If, it, if it's not a true question or petition to God, then it's not really a prayer anyway, right? Yeah, we're really praying to ourselves then, aren't we? Right, right. Okay, another one from, from Kathy here. Is God, I love this question, by the way. Is God more likely to answer prayers we pray for ourselves or prayers we pray for others? What an interesting I, I think, question. Uh, I think equal, equally... I think it all is to do with the heart. I think if the heart is right, we'll automatically pray for others. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? We'll, you know how scripture, uh, J Jesus says, you, your people will know you're my followers by the way you love one another. And uh, so I, I think when Jesus said pray, he said, give us today our daily bread. Mm -hmm. And so he, he cares about our daily necessities, our basics, our, our personal needs. It's not like, no, if only if you pray for others, am I going to answer you? No, no, right. God's not like that. But when we have a heart for God, we'll automatically pray for the very people that are on God's heart. I think if you're wired like me, uh, sometimes I, th I feel almost it's more noble to pray for others. So there, therefore, God would answer them <laughs> or, or it's better to pray for others. And I think this, it's a good correction if you're like me. God wants to hear your prayers about you too. He loves you just as much as he loves those other people, right? So right on. I hope that's helpful for you, Kathy. Uh, Ermine says, what are some of the ways or things that can keep us, uh, help us keep up the faith when we've been praying for years about something and there's still no answer? So how do we yeah. wait when we've been waiting a long time? Oh, I know. And especially, and she's probably thinking of people who have their own free will. Mm -hmm. You know, God will not violate a person's free will just because we're praying for them. But he will send people across their pathway that otherwise would not have gone across their pathway to point them to God. Right. He'll increase the intensity of a spirit's uh, work in their life and bring circumstances across their pathway that will turn them to God. One quick way to answer this too is, uh, listen, I've learned this uh, from personal experience. Prayers outlive the prayers. <laughs> I've seen people die and I've been privileged to be an answer to something they prayed when they were alive. And, and, and even though they're dead, their prayers still live on. And I end up leading people to Jesus mm. because someone that is now with the Lord prayed for them. And so no prayer gets wasted. Every one of them uh, gets used by God, even if the one who is praying them has passed away. Okay, that's really good. And I think that ties into this next question from PTL. Uh, and it's, it's a it's a bit of a long one, but it, it gives some context here. Do we have to pray the same prayer repeatedly instead of just once in order for God to answer a prayer? 
And then this is the, their personal example. I've prayed for healing and salvation for my uncle every day, but he died last year without a salvation. But when I prayed for the, just once for my cousin, she was saved last year. Does, does God seem to like repeated prayers as indicated in the Bible, like the persistent widow? So interesting yeah. question yeah. there. Yeah, and, and I think just on the side there, Matt, I, I think, um, is it PTL or whoever yeah, PTL, said yeah. that? Um, you know, th there again, you see what you were doing? You were praying for this uncle, but they had their own free will. Right. And God did not violate it. But you also don't know what happened in their hearts. Yeah, you'll never even know. Even in the last moments. You don't know. Because there's times people have a vision or a dream about Jesus and it, he reveals himself for who he is. So we don't know. We have to leave that with the Lord yeah. and, and, and trust him with that. But you're quite right. The Bible says ask, and then it says seek. Seek means you keep on, keep on, keep on. Knock means you knock until the door is answered. So, you know, one third of the prayers in Jesus' sort of description may be uh, ask and receive, right. like, like the second example you gave. But a lot of it is just continuing. And here's what happens now. Watch. When I continue to pray... Uh, God will refine my prayers. Something will happen in that person's life and it will compound and it will accelerate. And so you, you keep on asking. It, it's called perseverance in prayer, like that persistent widow story that Jesus told. Right. Oh, that's so good. Um, okay, Patty G and Juan. Sometimes I write and journal my prayers down and give it to God. Uh, besides saying it, I said, like just speaking it out, is that just as powerful? Are, and are there other ways to pray in my mind with tongues? Is like, is there like uh, tears of prayer? I guess is if I can summarize the question, is there better ways to pray than others? Yeah, the Apostle Paul answered that, and I can give his answer. He said this. He said, "Pray with all kinds of prayer." You're so good to be writing that. I mean, that just is sort of like another tool in your prayer toolbox. Yeah. And uh, all kinds of prayer, like, like an intercessory prayer is not the same as a personal request. You know, you're praying for someone else. Uh, we talked about that earlier, diversity in prayer and in ways of praying. Listen, I don't know that there's a, 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 a prayer that comes from someone that's reaching out to God, written down or, or spoken or agreeing together with someone else. I don't think though, there's a whole lot of bad ways to just, uh, with faith, reach out to Father and, and, and ask for His will to be done. So writing them down doesn't make them more powerful, but it's, it may make it more powerful for you. Your faith may rise more. Right. So uh, pray with all kinds of prayers. And I think uh, maybe if I can just uh, encourage you, like I think uh, God wants you to pray as you. So if you're not a journaler and that's not something that really resonates with you at all, that doesn't mean you should jump in and start journaling and, and do prayer journaling. Uh, God wants you to pray as you are, just like we would want our child not to try and be another child so that we would love them more. Uh, we, 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 we have that connection with God that is our own in our own way. And so if that helps you, definitely. But, you know, also it's, it doesn't hurt to try some different things, right? It doesn't hurt to, to try different methods of prayer. Yeah, so why not put more tools in the toolbox? Why not expand your ways of praying? It's a way of growing, isn't it? Absolutely. And some of it we won't know until we try. There's a ton of questions. So I'm going to try and keep moving here. Abby C. It says, if we know, sorry, if God knows what we need, wouldn't he provide it for us even if we didn't ask for it through prayer? Oh, he, he does all the time. You're <laughs> try, try and take another breath. You know? right. I mean, where did that come from? He's the sustainer of life. He doesn't just give life. He sustains it. We get so many blessings that we don't even ask God for. You know? right. Namely, Jesus coming even when we were sinners. You know? right. So right. constantly we're getting. But, but here's the thing. Prayer is not just you know rehearsing what we're going to get anyway from God. Right. Prayer is partnering with God so that he does something that he would not otherwise do, but he wants to do it. And he's ch he's chosen prayer to partner with us. Remember James said this. He said, "You do not have because you do not ask." Right. And so there are things that we don't have because we simply don't exercise that 
privilege of prayer and asking Father God for them. Right, yeah. It's not just a, a, an exercise. Chaplin says, does known sin in our lives block answers to our prayers? So if oh, we're... selfishness. And, uh, you know, like, like James goes on in that very same passage, he says, you don't have because you ask what you can get for yourself, he said. <laughs> so no wonder your prayers. So selfishness. And, and that, but you know, it's been my pastoral experience that the person, I can't remember who asked that, but Chaplin. they're usually the least one I, to worry about. Because <laughs> right, okay. they're usually the one that's not wanting to have sin in their life, not wanting to do wrong. And so they can sometimes be robbed of their privilege of prayer just by thinking, well, I'm not good enough. I can't pray good enough. I have sin in my life. No, no, listen. You, you, you confess your sins and he is faithful and just and will forgive you all of your sin, cleanse away all unrighteousness. None of us, uh, if, if sin had to be totally gone from us in order for our prayer to be heard by God, we'd all be in trouble, <laughs> right? Because right. Right? We, we'd, uh, we wouldn't even get past base one with being forgiven of our sins uh, and being saved, uh, you know, for eternity. Because that involves coming to Jesus and saying, I, like that fellow we talked about earlier, Jesus used as an example, God be merciful to me, a sinner, right? Yeah. I see that I don't qualify. I don't have what it takes. That's why I need a Savior. I need you, Jesus. I think um, in, in uh, maybe two ways that that might, might be uh, for Chaplin, like uh, if it's an unconfessing, if it's something that you do not want to, to uh, hand over to God, if it's something that you want to continue in, uh, if it's something you know it's wrong and want to keep doing it, does that change anything? Oh, totally. Good, good catch there, Matt. Good distinction because that, that's that selfishness where I'm just, that James talked about, I'm just going to keep doing my thing and pray what I want to pray. It's not a case of, God, your will be done. Cleanse me. I want to be clean. I, I, wanna, I, I want sin to be gone from my life. Yeah, if someone is, uh, knows what's right and they have the power to choose what's right, but they continue to do wrong, whoa. That's dangerous territory, you right. know, because that's saying, I know better than you, God. And uh, th that's, that's, not <laughs> that's not a condition in which uh, I would want to pray about anything else in my life and expect it to be answered with a yes. And I've heard God you... God will get me into a place where I'm ready to handle it, right? Right. I've heard you teach on unforgiveness as well, being one of those things that can block that type of connection to God, right? Yeah. I call it spiritual cholesterol because... <laughs> You know, God, Jesus always wants to forgive. But remember Jesus, says in the, he said, hey, when you pray, pray this. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who have debts against us. And then at the end of the prayer in one of the Gospels, Jesus says, mm -hmm. you know, for whatever sin you don't forgive someone else for, your father won't forgive you. Why? Is that God saying, until you forgive them, I'm not going to forgive your sin? Not at all. What we've done is we've blocked off the channel <laughs> in our own lives by not forgiving someone. That's the very channel that's in us for God's forgiveness to flow in. And so it's not God's fault if his forgiveness hits a, a, a blockage, a barrier, because we are not forgiving someone else. We're not willing to give to someone else what God so generously gives us. There's a great story about that if this person wants to read it. It's the one where, where the, the guy... Uh, the, the parable of the servants and, and one's forgiven much debt and, mm, and, right. and little debt. Read that one. It's really good yeah. in, that, in this context. That's good. Some homework for you there, Chaplain. Okay. Uh, Steph on the YouTube uh, chat is saying, how can I encourage someone who's been praying for a full-time job since September 2020 and still hasn't been able to find one? Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess you keep on seeking. <clears throat> Get them to hear uh, the teaching today, if they're open to that, um, you know, none of us know the timing, right? Um, none of us knows the day or the hour Jesus said when he's going to return, only the Father. There's some things we just don't know the timing of, but we we persist, we persevere, even when we're not feeling it. That's sort of what the, the teaching today has been about, just to encourage people that are, you know, it just you pray and things get worse or it just doesn't happen. Um, you know, all I can say is that uh, you know, it's written on one of the walls in, the, I think, the prayer room down there. Every time you pray, something happens that would not have otherwise happened. And you, 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 you just have to trust God with the timing and the outcome. 
Sometimes he's getting us ready to handle something better, right? I'm sure Joseph in prison was saying, how come I'm not out of here, you know, in Egypt, you know? But God was preparing. Remember, he, he, brought a, a, he became the, the head guy in the prison, and his gifts became known. It leaked out to the king, and that's Pharaoh, and that's how Joseph got out of prison. So God's at work, even when you can't see what he's doing. Another way maybe to help, uh, uh, we talked about, about this last night, is answers to prayer don't always mean the yes answer, right? So yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe there is an answer to prayer that's happening in some ways for this person who's looking for a job, but there, you, you've yeah. got four answers, right? <laughs> that, that yeah, one. well, sometimes God says yes, sometimes he says no. Because he loves us so much, he's not going to give us something bad for us. Just like, Matt, when you, as a 9 or 10-year-old said, uh, requested, honestly, take, can we go back to Ottawa? You know, uh, God has something bigger and better in mind. So sometimes yes, sometimes no, sometimes wait. It's a timing issue. And four, sometimes you've got to be kidding, right? I think yeah. that's what God said to Elijah when he said, Lord, take my life. <laughs> right. God says, you've got to be kidding. Right. He also gave him a no, by the way. <laughs> so uh, I hope that's helpful uh, uh, there, Steph. Uh, Ricky says, if God says no to a prayer, uh, is it because he will say yes to something better than what we're asking? So a little bit on those lines and, and yeah, some of what you, you mentioned earlier, but... Maybe a little direct yeah. for Ricky. Yeah, and and uh, he, he, this is I I don't I I have when my wife and I pray at night, sometimes I'll say, "Oh God, like how can there be all these billions of us, and so many are in such like horrible situations, per Christians being persecuted and killed, people starving to death, and yet I'm bringing you my request. I right. don't understand, other than God's power is unlimited." And Jesus, here's what Jesus said. He said, see the lily of the field? <laughs> right. See the sparrow that just fell? God attended its funeral. God's aware. He cares. So if God's aware and cares about something, you know, less than human condition and situation, you know that he, he, he cares for you. He says you're so much more valuable than sparrows and, 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 and flowers. So, so he... You, you can really trust God to bring about the best for those who leave the choice with him. Thank you, Pastor Keith. I've, we've got a few more questions here. These are fantastic, and I'm, I'm seeing that there's some questions still coming in, and people are, are still tracking with us. So we're going to keep going. Um, Sarah says, how do you balance praying for the burdens of day-to-day -day care um, as well as praying for direction and, and kind of the big, the macro stuff, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah, what a, what a great question. And uh, again, you're taking me back to my prayer times with my wife every evening. We, we so often say that, God, here we are bringing our, you know, daily needs to you. And yet there's all this, you know, pandemic that's happening all around the world and people dying. And so... Why would you care about our day-to-day? -day? But Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. And, uh, and practice forgiveness. He, he taught all that. But then he also said, right in the same prayer, God, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. How much more macro can you get? You know? right, so he's yeah. got micro and macro happening in the Lord's prayer that he taught right. us to pray. So all I can say to you is this. It's amazing that your God, who, who um, is taking care of the whole universe, cares about what you're talking about. And we, I think we all, every caring Christian, uh, has to just accept that. God, you care about the macro, and you care about my micro. Right. So, in a summary for Sarah, how do you balance it? You do both, right? <laughs> you bring both exactly. things. Exactly. That's yeah. sort of the answer around here. We try and be a balanced church. You know, when Tom <laughs> says... Is it this or is it that? What about both? Why does that be? You know, that's the, isn't that one of the biggest problems in the world today? People get in their, uh, what do they call them? Their echo chambers and just mm -hmm. talk to people that believe what the vaccine, these people believe in those. And no one's, you know, just if they would just talk to each other, we'd probably come up with something a whole lot more truthful and, and helpful. We're going to solve the world's problems right here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have another question from Sir. Uh, if if a prayer is not answered, does that mean we do not have enough faith? I know there's faith. Faith kicks in, but.
But faith comes by pursuing the answer, getting to know, because when you're pursuing, you're saying, oh, God, you're faithful. You know, it occurs to you at a communion service, if you love me enough to die for me, then, then I know you care. And so faith rises. Faith is not something you come up with, by the mm. way. Faith is not, um, you, you, faith, faith is in a person. It's right. in Jesus. Is Jesus faithful? <laughs> right. That's ba the bottom line. Then I have faith. And then we, uh, we can grow our faith by, it's like a muscle in our spiritual anatomy, that if we exercise our faith, it gets stronger and stronger. And so we, 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 we keep on asking. We keep exercising our faith. And our faith can grow by exercising it. But our faith is only as... Um, as real as the object of our faith. Right. Our faith is not in our prayers. Our faith is not in our faith. Our faith is in Jesus. Right. And so it, it grows as we get to know Jesus better and better because we say that's what Jesus would want to have happen in this situation. And so we have faith for it. That's sort of what it comes down to. And I think uh, in a couple of the stories in, in the Gospels that I've, I, I, I'm thinking of right now, faith is often easiest seen by like your persistence. Because if you truly yeah. believe yeah. that Jesus is who he says he is and you, your faith is in Jesus, then you're not going to yeah. give up. Yeah, watch this, Matt. Watch this, Matt. Go back to Acts 2. That church that was seeing ask and receive, signs, wonders, miracles happen, did that church have more faith or was it in Acts 12 where they didn't even really believe that God was hearing, but right. they just prayed because they trusted God more than they trusted their own feelings, you know? Right. Who had more faith? It's a, lot e it's a lot easier to have faith when things are just coasting and every, you're driving down the road and every light is green. God's really <laughs> with me today, but what happens when everyone's red and you're trying to get to someplace important? You know right. what I'm saying? So it, it's trusting God when you can't see, you know? Right. Faith, faith is the, the evidence of things not seen when we can't see, but I don't trust my faith. I trust the faithful. I trust Jesus. Right. So that's really where um, that's really where, where where supernatural happens. Okay. Wow. This has been so good. I think we're going to call it a day. Thank you, Pastor Keith, for for helping us with all those questions. That was really great. Thank you. Oh, uh, listen. I just love. Uh, helping people you know when their camera shut off I, I i just immediately went into tears and saying oh god you know what your people are going through mm -hmm. you know just encourage them just help yeah. them so thank you for the privilege of serving you with uh, answers to those questions i'd i'd be happy to stay here with you all day <laughs> and uh, miss my spaghetti lunch and be here for you okay love you church bless you thanks pastor keith